Michael, if you're talking, you're muted. Oh, no. Uh, hello. 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 Nice coffee mug. Thanks. Why don't we give folks a few more minutes to join? I got to draw up five before the hour. So in case I disappear, I'm not ghosting. I got somewhere to go. No worries. Hello. Brandon, you signed in. Yeah. Oh, oh no, I'm on, I'm on the, the CSGF account. It's all right. I figured it was you. I've done it I was, before. I now almost all of us. The, I was trying to figure out the streaming thing. Ah. Yeah. Emily, I don't know if we updated the CNCF calendar where there's also an invite and some other folks might be there. What? For today? Yeah. Hold on. I never thought that we had a CNCF calendar for this event. Uh, Robert and Pop are, are on the other one. Oh no. Oh, okay. What? Should we ask them to come over because- if Yeah, I'm, I'm doing that, but maybe they want to stay a little bit in case somebody else goes there. I will message Amy to have it updated with the correct link because this one um, that's on the calendar had expired and there was no way for us to go back in and remanage it. Cool. Shall we get to it? Seems like Robert should find his way. Brandon. I just, I just gave the link uh, under so because we were both in the wrong Zoom. Yeah. Apologies about that. Thanks for sharing it with them. You were the closest one I had on to send direct, but thanks now in the channel or it's on the channel from yesterday. Okay. Uh, Emily, where did you all leave off from? I read your meetings from last week, your meeting notes. Uh, where did you all leave off and you want to pick up? Um, so it was super light last week. It uh, was more about we need to figure out what our next steps are. We need to define what our next deliverable is and what does that look like. And folks should come prepared with ideas for what that is. Um, there was also feedback that we got from Clint Gibbler about some small tweaks that could potentially be done, such as providing assurance categories against the checklist that we put together. So if someone was interested in tackling that, that would be much appreciated. 
Um, but other than that, it's come with ideas so we can decide what the next thing is. And it sounds like Brandon and a few others from the group that have been talking out of band are excited to come to present their idea. Should I start talking now? Oh. <laughs> okay. You did already. All right. Yeah, so so uh, so I met up with uh, a couple other folks, and then we were basically a bunch of documents circulating around. So I decided, you know, let's let's get everyone in the room to have, have a chat about it. So apparently, there have been multiple efforts to do um, secure software factory, um, and people have been having multiple implementations and designs. Um, so we had a call and um, we figured that, you know, this would be a good place to kind of get together and try and collaborate towards a single effort. Um, so this, um, the folks that I was talking to was uh, Jonathan Meadows, uh, who is doing this for, for uh, on behalf of city uh, for their infrastructure uh, that they will want to have a reference architecture from. Um, then Lorenc uh, also has a proposal um, that I put in the issue, and so it's a very detailed one. Um, and I think the, the outcome of the discussion is that both implementers are kind of at the same stage of figuring things out, um, but uh, they wanted to bring folks from the other community. So, so the main technologies that they were looking at were um, um, Tecton for the, the CI, we have um, um, Tough in total and Six Star. And these were kind of like the things that it was, the, the discussion was around. Um, obviously, the, the end goal is to say here's a reference architecture and have some sort of open source implementation that we can point to to say, like, you know, if we really want, you can take a look at this and then use all these open source tools and implement something similar. Um, kind of, I guess you could say this is, if you've seen any of like the NIST industri uh, industry reports, it's something like that. Like here's a, a, a reference architecture, here's what we did, here's maybe a quick demo of how it works. Um, and really, I think the, the, what we were talking about was maybe a, a group of implementers coming together to work towards like one um, generic solution and then writing a reference architecture from that. So, you know, it's really going into the weeds of what needs to be done within the community, um, features that need to be written and interfaced um, throughout the different projects. Um, yeah, so, so I think the idea was to kind of keep it um, technical, keep it focused, keep it within a, um, you know, have frequent meetings to, to kind of almost like a, a sprint, right? Uh, yeah. 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 You heard it expressed from, from Jonathan. So it's not really a foreign idea. It's not new to the group. It's actually what we discussed when we first got together. I think a couple, couple things to be mindful of is yes there's many other efforts but there's not a lot of alignment some of these efforts have different goals so i'd like to check with the team that we don't feel that we're being pulled in in different directions i don't think that we are personally and that we're still doing what we got together and have the energy and, and the desire to accomplish and we're not suddenly doing something else because others are as well then when when we talk about a generic solution one one trade-off is well the the reference architecture that's being discussed and the projects involved are somewhat opinionated or could be perceived as opinionated but if you don't do it with this what else do you do it so we might just be explicit like walking on and with this particular components but we should try to make this swappable or or like generalizable as, as we can and then make it almost like a proposed solution and then have it the doc to be almost open-ended where somebody could take other components but the, the key high level uh aspects of this should be 
what are we trying to accomplish from the software supply chain perspective? Mm-hmm. And and then, but this, like, I believe that this should be a, a group that's almost like a SWAT team that is literally just focused on the actual mechanics of this versus the, you know, in, 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 in tandem with like an overarching doc of some sort. And if, if we do shift to this, organizing for developing software is different than organizing for, for writing a paper. So do we self-organize around that? Who's going to run the sprint, uh, et cetera? Yeah, so I think that there are two aspects of this, right? So, so um, um, if, if, if you look at the, like the, the NIST IRs and stuff like that, really half the document is about introducing the problem, <laughs> making sure that we, we set the stage and making it clear that this is A, implementation, not D, implementation. Um, and, you know, just breaking, like you said, breaking down the components, um, talk about like, oh, what are, here are the different things and here are examples of certain things. Um, so I would say even like this could, end up being, um, you know, we have the implementers work on this, but at the same time we have um, maybe a potentially slightly bigger group of people working on like the problem statement, the, the, the layout, the, the reference architecture portion of it, right? As long as it's just alignment yeah. between the groups. That's fine. I, yeah, ideally if the implementers can self-organize and they're really clear what they're setting out to accomplish, Great. But if someone needs someone else to come up with a Kanban board so they can burn through that board, and we're going to have people of different levels wanting to pitch in, right? So we might get a couple of junior guys that are really eager to to write code. So we should make it accessible. So let me pause there. I'm curious, like what Richard, Aditya, Michael think, uh, Timothy. Uh, I, I just want to get a quick summary of what we're actually asking for. What would be the, like, and, and break this down into to a simple sort of iterative, is the idea that we just, we would start off with as minimal of a reference architecture that reflects what we, uh, we express in the paper as possible? Is that the idea, Andres? Uh, I think it's, it's kind of really not the whole paper, but just focusing on the secure software factory stuff and whatever is actually relevant in order to provide that context. So just a single part of that rather than, you know. I uh, think, what, I think what is the ultimately, first, I'm it, sorry, I just got. I, I think that's, that's a great question because yes, one, like, well, if, if we're to do anything at all, what is that? But at the same time, what is the MVP? Sure, Brandon, for the software factory, but we don't want to throw away what we wrote into the paper, right? So we want to make sure it's tightly connected to the paper and it captures maybe a subset of it, maybe not all of it. Yeah. I think we have to be cognizant of what the end, the end goal is, the short-term goal and the end, end goal is, right? And I feel like short, short-term, it's have a Git repo with some type of reference architecture somebody can take and then iterate on top of, which again, it, w- it will be somewhat opinionated because this is, you know, I think to a certain degree, but it should be okay. Now you can go ahead and take this and do other things if you need to. But if we don't have that, if we do not have that basis, that's the whole point of this. Like we're like, we need a basis for somebody to. Yeah, on top of. I agree. I think that I think the, the, the hardest thing right now with that paper is that it's just for a lot of people based upon where they work, it's a, a totally foreign concept, right? You can't, you can't interact with it. Even Michael and I were talking the other day. Uh, Michael, did we ever figure out what's that open source alternative for Artifactory? for for an artifact (laughs) store we don't like what would we reckon i i was thinking about that too if we were to do a reference architecture for other people to to pull in what would you use to represent that piece that people could actually access these are these are the sort of questions that we should probably start answering now uh you know like what what would you want to see i can think of i can think of plenty of ways to represent the the software factory but it'd be hard to do it in a way that i think you could really exposed to end users or external users who just want to get a sense of what we're recommending. That's, that's, I think the challenge we could all build this ourselves and, and run it in, in a private organization that we wanted to do. There's, I, I don't have a question there. Uh, it's making it publicly accessible is the, the hard part. Yep. So um, yeah, th- there's two things um, 
I just wanted to bring up real quick. So one was, I think, uh, at a high level is like, hey, we should probably keep looking at some of the prior art. Like I know the DOD has done a lot of work on Software Factory, um, could prove useful just to sort of look at how they've they've sort of pushed some stuff. Um, and then the second, I think is it ties into what Richard was saying is more of like a practical concern as well as um, unlike a lot of the other software where it's just like, oh yeah, if you're running, you know, kind or another Kubernetes cluster locally, you can kind of do some dev work, yada, yada. Um, software factory is quite large. It consists of a lot of, you know, big infrastructure components. Um, I, I think it's also one of the early things we're going to need to solve is like, how are we going to be doing dev on this? How are we going to be, you know, cause it does require a lot of infrastructure to sort of run an artifact repository, a Kubernetes cluster, a build system, and all the things you would expect to be part of a, a software factory. So I kind of wish um, Jonathan or, or Dan was here to, to kind of talk about the scope of it. Uh, but I think I think probably this this isn't a good time for them. Yeah. Um, well, I, I, I think we're teasing out principles we want to arrive upon yeah. for that architecture. Yeah. Like I, how how extensible do do we want to make this, right? Is it something that we're gonna provide an SDK for the software factory, or we're just like stitching and gluing together existing things and saying like, oh, go use Harbor, go use Tecton, go, go use Six Store. I think that's, I feel like that is kind of a, a question of where things are and how developed things are because, you know, um, as with a lot of reference architectures, this, let's say like 80% of it is, you know, easy to do, like um, like Michael, Michael saying, right, Kubernetes cluster, put things there. And then certain things are like very involved, you know, certain, certain reference architectures that talk about hardware root of trust, you know, you need a TPM, you need a, all this hardware, specialized hardware. And I feel like, <clears throat> I'm not sure whether we can have a, um, whether we can just talk about this, like I feel like there needs to be implementation details that that come into this discussion in order for it to make a bit more sense. Um, can we make because, that maybe? Yeah. I'm sorry, cut you off, friend. Can we make that maybe some uh, a deliverable as part of the you know obviously part of the the group would have to do is one come up with minimum spec, two come up with like you know what is required uh, for initial spec and then growing from a scale perspective. But we need to get that initial spec out the door, right? And that's yeah. the thing. Like we can deliberate over this forever, but like I feel like we get it out there and then we kind of just iterate and iterate. That's the beauty of. Uh, of Git, I guess, right? We can, we can sit here and PR the shit out of this until we're at a point where we love it, right? I'm so elo I'm so eloquent this morning, aren't I? I'm no, sorry, you. <laughs> yeah, so so I think we, we should definitely have the, the scope the scope discussion, right? And and I think it should be, um, but I feel like the implementer should be here for it to tell us what's feasible and what's not. Um, let's let's run it. Let's run it as a as a software project, you know, and like. Jonathan is one of the leads for this group. Uh, Dan is not a member of the group. It would be fantastic to work with him, but I don't want to outsource decision making to people who are not on the call. I want. I really want to see the folks here to step up and be participant of it, rather than the, us doing role augmentation for for other people and their projects. Yeah. No, yeah. I, I I agree, and I I think that the. Uh, that was the main reason kind of us asking them to come to the community. I, I think it's more of a scheduling problem right now that they're not here. Um, so I think we can probably resolve that. Yeah, that, that's fair. Uh, and yeah, the, the more the merrier, but it, it's good if like we also give, sure, I'm sure Dan is going to have like really firm architectural opinions, but we also want to capture the ones of others if we want to make this General, generalizable and applicable to everyone and not just the most burning pain points and use cases of a particular organization. Yeah. And the other part, as you said, yes, 80% is easy, but that 20%, those gaps, if, if we want to determine those as, well, those are opportunity costs, we're not going to focus on that, or we're going to state, hey, 80% is easy, anyone can figure it out. We're gonna focus on building the twenty percent that's not there. 
And how do you assemble that crew that's going to build it? How who writes the spec? Who reviews the spec? How do you do the the assignment and allocation once you understand the level of effort? Okay, stupid question time. Was the scheduling issue a result of lack of awareness or time? Sorry, I had to step away for five seconds. I heard of what Andrew was saying, but I missed the, the second half of it. I, I, I presume like a meeting that starts on a Friday half and way into the hour, it doesn't work for a lot of people who others have scheduled like meetings starting at the mark of the hour or the hour earlier. Okay. Maybe we can do a doodle to find a better time. Okay. This time is sort of inconvenient for me and I presume it's also it's for others. So who's gonna do the doodle poll with everybody that's interested to determine a better time? So, so I can do a quick one. Yeah, Andreas, are you, are you kind of volunteering yourself as a sick representative for this initiative? Or? uh yeah i i i, I reiterate it <laughs> i restate it plus one okay so andres is going to be the stag sponsor andres would you verify the ticket's been updated with that information and then if i heard correctly you will also do the doodle poll to determine a better time yes ma'am New awesome. ticket, old ticket, what ticket are we talking about? New ticket. Um, so I think for the purposes of discussion, ticket 679 is the most appropriate and we can tailor it and adjust it accordingly based off of the scope requirements defined by this group. Yeah. Do we we probably agree? need another one for like just long-term planning of the working group because we have all this tactical issues, but fair. Um, I think that should be better as a PR to the repo as an ongoing project. That way those, those individuals have been identified and we can provide um, a readme within the repo about planning. Cause there is a supply, supply chain security folder now in the repository. And we need to be able to update the owners of that so that Jonathan can also contribute um, and merge PRs and a few others. Yeah, particularly those here who have been super involved. Yep. Yeah, so we'll figure out the administrative part. Uh, Richard, you went off mute and wanted to say something. Oh, no, I just wanted to make sure, uh, like, was there a decision made that the next steps for this group is to build that, the, the to go to the software side of this and actually build a reference architecture or build an implementation of this? Is that the, was that decided? Because that's a good, next steps i don't think that it was firmly decided but it was <laughs> the only thing that has been talked about so you could make the assumption that yes collectively we decided i mean i was going to propose we make a broadway musical about this paper so uh... i'll take a hard pass on that <laughs> you're starring in it uh i'd like brandon to adapt the broadway. stream the screenplay for it so brandon will be writing that <laughs> Um, no. I can provide the music, not 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 any writing. I, I think it's. I'm I think more it's... a fan of interactive theater, like Sleep No More. So it's going to go off Broadway. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, no, I think that's a it's a solid next step. I, I I you know, and it would be, would it be the same working group? This would it would be just this. We just change to how we actually interact. Is that the idea? And. Uh, those of you like I I don't I don't generally see a lot of work happening in, in regularly scheduled scheduled meetings. How do you all do project management for in general at CNCF for these sort of software pieces? What do you use? It is really dependent on the people leading the project. So mm -hmm. I think we, we leave that up, you know, to to um in this case it'll be between you know uh Andreas and I and Jonathan and whoever whoever decides to kind of want to take, take up a bigger role, I think whatever works between them, we usually find that it works best. Yeah. yeah. I would assume okay. it would probably be the consensus of what other developers want to lose if it's Kanban or it's, you know, get a project or whatever it might be, right? And, sure. Yeah. yeah. But All right. there's just no standard. Zoom. They're stuck to, you're stuck to Zoom. That's something we demand. <laughs> we have one tool, we have Zoom. 
Uh, okay, cool. Um, we have, we have I, VI. It's the only tool you can use. VI. <laughs> hey, I'm I'm all on board. Uh, I am I am curious, and this would be like my first thing I'd want to see is, uh, or just in general, what would be the gaps? What would be missing to actually make a solid implementation of this? Because, like I was saying, like I can already see a couple things that I just wouldn't be able to answer for today. If I wanted to write a, a solid, you know, reference implementation for it. Do we only do open source tools? Is that like a, what are the constraints as well on this, on this project? I, I know these are probably more implementation discussions that will have to come later, um, but it'd be a good thing probably to have people start brewing these ideas. Yeah, I, I know with like the other stuff that we, we are doing with the, the cloud native security map as well, um, for areas in which are pretty mature, we, we try and just um, provide the open source tooling. Um, for areas which don't necessarily make that much sense as like open source projects. So for example, one of the things that, that we had in the cloud native security map was like DDoS protection. And there isn't a open source project that does DDoS protection because it's infrastructure based. So for that, we, we, we defer to kind of like, here are some services or so here are some, um, um, you know, companies or methods to, to protect against it. So I think there is some flexibility, but there is always like a, a tendency to favor open source, like okay. really open source projects, yeah. Okay. So cool. traditionally, as a CNCF stag working group, we will always prefer CNCF projects where reasonable and appropriate, followed by general open source. And if there is a gap from the existing uh, structure, then we may refer to commercial products as an acceptable alternative, but not an endorsement. And we have to be very choice in the language that discusses those recommendations. Yeah. I did, like I said, when we were talking, I was just like, it, 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 it dawned on me that there is a gap in a lot of this in the open source space. And that's good feedback to the CNCF as well. <laughs> yes, and just so everybody knows, the CNCF and the Linux Foundation actively seek out gaps within the ecosystem and the community so that they can be aware of um, new and upcoming projects that they can kind of help support that fill that gap, or perhaps kind of put a bug in a couple of uh, key players in the field's ears so that they can go through and start doing development. Cool. Awesome. What are the next steps? We've got two minutes. Oh, do we have two minutes or do we have 30 minutes? Yeah, we have 30 minutes technically. Oh, I have two minutes. Uh <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the next steps are we need to find a better time. Andres is gonna do that. But I think for right now, we can expect that this meeting date and time will continue until changed. Um, we need to determine the project management style. We need to document the scope that we just, we just talked about, which is CNCF projects first, open source next, all the caveats for commercial. Um, and those are the only ones that I have. And we need to identify a software team lead like basically the, yes. the for the actual like where the rubber meets the road the the document like it feel like it feels like again Dan and John Meadow should be around at least to kind of define like that high level but we need somebody that's the kind of the rubber meets the road project management of the of this reference architecture deployment Is there anything else No? Okay, so I made a Google Doc for notes. I dropped it in the chat. I changed the channel header to link to the new doc. Um, so if anybody has any questions, they can go there, type things up. I'm going to attempt to finish capturing all of our notes for today. And then that's it. Awesome. Awesome. So look, look forward to start building. Yeah. Bye, everyone. See ya. Have a good weekend.